Welcome back. We are working on lesson two, which is operations with functions in the composition and inverse function unit. So this is lesson two, so let's get started. Okay, you should have printed out your note-taking guide. So here's your note-taking guide. And at the top, there are four functions, f of x, g of x, h of x, and j of x. And we're going to learn how to add those two, or add two of them, subtract, multiply, and divide. So the four basic operations with different functions. So we've got some different examples up here to work with. Okay, the first one we're going to do is we're going to add two functions. And in this example, we're taking g of x plus j of x. So what we're going to do is go up here and pull the g of x, x function and the j of x function and just add those two functions together. So let's work through that example. Okay, our g of x function, we're going to add to the j of x function. So we're going to write down our g function first, 2x squared minus 8, and we're going to add to that function the j function, which is 7x cubed minus 5x squared plus 8. Okay, when we're adding these two functions together, all we're going to do is add our like terms. So since we're just adding, we're going to take, okay, the highest exponent we would list first would be 7x cubed, and we don't have a, another x cubed term to add to it, so we're just going to bring that one down. Then we have 2x squared minus 5x squared, which is negative 3x squared, and then we're going to add to it positive or negative 8 and a positive 8, which just ends up being 0. So our final answer is just going to be 7x cubed minus 3x squared. So that's how you add two functions together. You're just adding your like terms. Now let's look at the subtraction problem, the second one on there. Okay, we're going to take the j of x function and we're going to subtract the g of x function. Now you have to be careful with subtraction because the order is very important. Because we know that when we add, when we subtract, it is not commutative. It's not going to be the same thing if we put them in the wrong order. So let's go up here and we're going to take our j of x function and we're going to subtract the g of x function. So our j of x function is x 7x cubed minus 5x squared plus 8 as a function, and we're going to subtract to g of x, which is 2x squared minus 8. Now, we have to be very careful with subtraction because we know that we have to distribute that negative into the back function. So now let's, I always change to addition and distribute. So I bring my 7x cubed down my 5x squared and my positive 8, and then I make this plus a negative, and I distribute that negative in, negative 2x squared, and that becomes a positive 8 because of the subtraction. Now we combine our like terms. 7x cubed just comes down. There's not a cubed function. I have negative 5x squared and a negative 2x squared, which is negative 7x squared and a positive 8 and a positive 8, which is positive 16. So there is my final answer. 7x cubed minus 7x squared plus 16. So just remember to distribute into the back function. Okay, now let's look at multiplying. So the third operation is multiplying two functions together. So we're going to take the f of x function and we're going to multiply it times the h of x function. So we've got some monomials and some binomials, even a trinomial up here, so we have to be careful and remember how to multiply functions together. So let's go up and just look at this first simple one, h of x times, or f of x times h of x. So f of x is 5x cubed and we're going to multiply that times the function h of x, which is x minus 2. Since this is just a monomial times a binomial, all we're going to have to do is just distribute. So 5x cubed times x is 5x to the what power? To the fourth minus 5x squared 
times negative 2, so that's 10x cubed. So that would be multiplying together. Now let's stop for a second. Now let's look at another possibility. Okay, that was a monomial times a, a binomial, so we just distributed. But if you had g of x times h of x and you had two binomials, you're going to have to do what? You're going to have to FOIL those together. So you're going to be doing some FOILing in this unit. Okay, so let's go down and look at dividing. Okay, we're going to take the g of x function and we're going to divide it by the h of x function. Okay, and it can be written as a division sign or just as a fraction. I just wrote it both ways for you. So let's go up and divide. Okay, so let's write down our g of x function first divided by our h of x function. And that's going to be 2x squared minus 8 all divided by x minus 2. Okay, now we have to think about how to just simplify that. Well, to simplify it, we're going to do that dreaded factoring. So let's look in the denominator, or in the numerator in the top, and what can we factor out? We can factor a 2 out because there's a common factor of 2. So that leaves us with x squared minus 4 over x minus 2. Okay, and this is a binomial, and that's a binomial, so we can't cancel anything out there. But if you'll notice, x squared minus 4 also factors again. That's the difference of two squares. So I'm going to factor into x minus 2 and then x plus 2 all over x minus 2. And lo and behold, I have an x minus 2 and an x minus 2. Now those two binomials will cancel out. So what are we left with? 2 times x plus 2 and that would be the simplified form. Okay, that would be the composite function of those two divided. Or, yes, the operation would be just dividing those two. That's what you would end with. Okay, so that is how you find the functions once they're simplified. But, the, of course, there's always a little catch. So let's talk about the catch, okay? And that is a limit on a domain. Okay, the limit on the domain, so now we're on page two of our note-taking guide. Limits on the domain, what can't be in the blank? Hmm, okay, let me tell you. Zero can never be in the denominator. So right here, I want you to fill in the word zero. Can't be in the denominator, and denominator is where in the fraction? In the bottom. So you can't have zero on the bottom because that's undefined. So let's go back to our function that we just figured out and figure out what x cannot be in this function, okay? So let's go back and write our g of x function over our h of x function. So our g of x function was 2x squared minus 8, okay, g of x over h of x, which was x minus 2. Okay, if you're looking at the original functions when you plug them in, we know that x can, or the denominator, the bottom, cannot be 0. Well, what forces x minus 2 to be 0? So take the denominator and set it equal to 0 and just solve a simple equation. And you see that well, x is 2 when the denominator is 0. So we actually have to limit that and say x cannot be 2 because if you plug a 2 in here, you get a 0 in the denominator. So x cannot be 2. So we would have to limit the domain to all real numbers except x cannot equal to 2. And that's how we could actually write that. You would say all real numbers except x cannot be 2. Okay? So really you're just looking at the function that is in the denominator or is in the bottom of the fraction and seeing what forces a zero into that function. So let's look at the second one. Let's look at the one that is h of x divided by f of x. So our h of x function divided by our f of x function. Oops, let me write the 